it would have been incredible. <laughs> so the salmon run, so hearing some uh, stories passed down from First Nations, even the small streams, such as the tributaries of the Serpentine and Nicomechal rivers, they would have salmon runs where there would be a family that would have a, a salmon weir there. The salmon would just come back in tremendous numbers. Not to mention the Fraser. I, I don't think I can comprehend how many salmon would have returned from the Fraser River. It just, like, there, there's stories of in certain areas almost being able to walk across rivers of salmon. Not to mention old-growth trees on the North Shore, these gigantic cedars and hemlocks that would be over four meters wide. Like, it just, to me, it, like, I, I dream of the era of the dinosaurs it was equally unfathomable uh, relative to the present state uh, that we have with this area. Ecological restoration is when you have a site which is damaged or degraded or destroyed and you wish to restore that ecosystem to uh, some sort of a, a reference state or pristine state. And so in ecological restoration, quite often there is not a template of how to heal an ecosystem. Because when you lose something in increments, you, you don't realize what's happening. And so this also builds into this idea of shifting baselines where each generation has a new sense, a new idea of what is natural or what is normal. And so if every 10, 20, 30 years, folks have a new definition of what is baseline, then that baseline slowly creeps away and then you don't realize how things are changing or what you've lost. So this is a really big uh, concept in conservation, in ecology, um, and it's of great concern because um, what one person defines as normal or natural um, may not be what used to be there. I think there's a multitude of um, small decisions that we can make in our daily lives um, that uh, together can make an appreciable difference, uh, not only for our own area, but uh, for the planet in general.